Welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil, Sean I'm Anthony Totry, joined as always by this guy right here, Sean DePaz. Yeah, yeah. Look, I know it's a walk of shame. I know the, the music is a little down, it's a little out, but it wasn't all bad in Arizona State's 42 to 28 loss to Caleb Williams and the USC Trojans. Sean, we obviously are going to get deep deep into the thick of this game because there's a lot to take away positives and things I think that Arizona State and Kenny Dillingham can, can really take and move forward with uh, but at the end of the day a loss is a loss 42-28 in favor of the Trojans before we get cooking on the game just want to shout out Illegal Pete's obviously we're here at Illegal Pete's their Tempe location we promised all week long that we'd be having a Marg. Margs. Win or loss, and that's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what, lose. what we we're lose, doing. Baby. If you guys are at home, maybe pour one for yourself and just enjoy the vibes, guys. Enjoy and the listen, vibes. I'll say a walk of shame usually implies that something good kind of happens. That, though, yeah, that's so fair. So this is a good kind of walk of shame. It's a true walk of shame. If you yeah. will. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a walk of shame only because you're still wearing the outfit that you were wearing last night, not because you had a bad night. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Look, chat, let us know, obviously, what you thought of the game. Takeaways, all that fun stuff. Sean, I, I want to start with just what we saw from this team from the get-go. We saw all week long yeah. that they needed to punch this USC team in the mouth, and it was an absolute dogfight until the fourth quarter. They ended up losing – in the same way that we said that they would lose mm-hmm. in terms of you can either play the time of possession game with USC, which we felt that would maybe give them a better chance to win. 100%. It ended up feeling like uh, at the end there that they ran out of gas and it was more of, okay, we're just going to try and exchange punches and you're not going to exchange no. punches with Caleb Williams. You're not surviving like that, uh, especially with this team the way it is, right? I mean, uh, I feel like it's it's not worth spending a whole lot of time on because it is what it is. But obviously, Drew Pine was not very good today. It's, it just does not seem to be uh, what this offense needs to be to really produce. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, like you said, when once it got to a point where they were trying to you know go blow for blow with USC, they just did not have they didn't have the weapons for that. Um, but it, it, for the most of the game, they were in it. They 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 kept us engaged. They kept us entertained, and and they. They didn't lay down. Like they, they, they looked like a, a real football team. Yeah, they, they looked look like competent. A real fo- I mean, we were talking about it coming up here. That game completely changes my outlook, and I think a lot of people's outlook on how the rest of the season yeah. is going to look, yeah. right? Because especially when you saw what U of A and Colorado did today, knowing you got to play both of those teams later in the re- in the season, but the performance like this, there's no reason you can't. There's no reason to believe that you can't beat both of those teams. No, yeah, um, no, I agree. And so, there was obviously so much positive to come out of this game. Um, it, there's yeah, it, it it is a loss, but it, it really doesn't. It feel doesn't like that feel like it. And bees in the chat. ASU wins this game with Jaden Rashada. That is all. Look, I am gonna say what I said to Sean on the way here, uh, and, and it's not really a hot take, mm-hmm. but I think at the end of the day, the team with Caleb Williams won the game. Yeah, and that's that's it. Like, if Caleb Williams is playing for Arizona State tonight, Caleb Williams is the only reason they, they win that game. Yeah, Caleb Williams is the only reason that they won because. I mean, U.S. Uh, specifically ASU's defense did a lot of the stuff that we talked about throughout the week, right? Getting pressure on Caleb Williams, making him uncomfortable. The problems, the problem is, is that Caleb Williams is just one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play college football. And so, you get pressure on him, but his pocket presence is is unbelievable. His awareness is unbelievable. His footwork is unbelievable. And if you're not like pressure is not enough, yeah. you got to take him to the ground, um, which they did do at times. Uh, yeah, they there did were do. a couple they, times. They, they, I mean. By and large, this was a terrific performance from the Sun Devils. But like you said, they just happened to have Caleb Williams on the other side of the field. And that ultimately was the difference. If, yeah. If ASU has Caleb Williams, or honestly, if Caleb Williams is not playing in this game at all, I think ASU might win this game. Yeah, because the roster tonight, right? The roster, it didn't feel like you were you had a roster of a 1-3 and three team on one side. No. In a roster of a number 5 team in the nation on the other side. Not at all. Outside of Caleb Williams... The Sun Devils were in this game. Elijah Badger, BJ Green, Cam Scadaboo have a fucking day. Like, are you kidding me? These yeah. were guys that showed up in a big way. Jalen Conyers. Yeah. And this is a team that is already without so many guys. They're, they're down to their third string quarterback. They're down a running back. They only have nine healthy offensive linemen to practice with. Like, 
this team has been beaten, and I think the resiliency that they showed tonight was really, really fucking yeah. impressive. And, and, you know, Kenny talked about it already in his press conference, just about, like, tonight, this this was activating the fucking Valley. Yeah, man. Like, getting out there, Mountain America Stadium, if you weren't that. at that game tonight and you had the opportunity to be, shame on you because you missed it. It was yeah. an electric environment. An electric and environment that had an effect on the game. That's what, that is what, like, you got a glimpse of what this place can be. Yes, yes, yes. Because, I mean, USC is obviously a really good team, really well coached. And uh, this this crowd forced them into penalties. Uh, early on, they had a false start. They had a few penalties that really did seem like they were created by the atmosphere, yeah. right? By by it being loud, by it being hostile for USC. Um, ultimately resulted in one of the funniest moments in <laughs> college football history, honestly, the... the Caleb Williams crotch shot. At the time, it was funny because I, th- I thought, I told you, I thought he was just upset because there was another offensive penalty, and then he just collapsed to the ground. I was like, oh, boy, and then I saw the replay. Uh, poor guy. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> tough. It was a funny moment. Look, you remember at the start of the week, at the start of the week, I, w- I was going through and I was listening to to what all the USC people had to say about Arizona yeah. State, and I started off and I, I set the quote to Sean that Lincoln Riley had uh, saying that, guess what? Arizona State isn't as far away as people think. And I think tonight, I think tonight showed people that Kenny Dillingham is the real deal. That yeah. Kenny Dillingham does have this place on the right track to be something, to be exactly what they want it to be. Uh, and, and, I mean, B said it. Kenny coached his ass off. Yeah, I mean, th- there's, we could spend this whole show talking about Kenny, right? Uh, that's the difference. I mean, you talk, Jalen and Joey Ramos and, and uh, Leaf were on the show earlier this week, and someone had asked them about, like, you know, how do you feel about Kenny Cullen plays? Yeah. And then their response was, you know, it's the same system. Ultimately, like, we just got to go out there and do their jobs. But maybe it's the same system. But what you saw out of Kenny was that he was just going to put his balls on the table, dog. And he was just going to go for it and, and yeah. be aggressive. And sometimes maybe too aggressive, right? Like, there's a little bit of a question about why they kind of got away from the run attack a little yeah. bit. But, like, between you had Cam Scadaboo throw multiple passes, punt the ball. You, you were going for it in, in crazy situations. Like, they were going for it. They were being adventurous. They were doing the things that you needed, again, to compete with a team that yeah. is is better than you, right? It is, is being a little unconventional, keeping them on their toes. And ASU, for at least the first, at least especially the first half, but for a lot of the game, did a great job at that. And that's super encouraging because you're not playing USC every week, right? You're not playing Caleb Williams every week. Um, and, and, you know, I mean... You can make an argument, I think, at this point that you that Oregon is the best team or Washington is the best team in this conference, not USC. But at the end of the day, USC is the highest ranked team in this conference. Um, and so based off that, like you have to feel good about your ability to compete going forward uh, in the rest of, uh, in this conference with the kind of play call, yeah. with the performance, and knowing that you're playing not USC. Look, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. If and this this might be a hot take, I think. Because when you when you get to the sideline pregame and you see all the recruits, yeah, you see all the potential commits that are out there, local guys, right? And I think if you're a local guy and you watch this game tonight, at least for me, especially if I'm an offensive player, USC didn't do it for me tonight. Like, oh yeah, no. the excitement that comes with with what you saw from Kenny Dillingham, I think you know it even in the loss. It was an effort. It yeah. was an effort to go get those guys, and I think it is certainly going to be interesting. I think there is a, a, a consensus that Kenny Dillingham should be the offensive play caller for the remainder of the yeah, season. I, I can't I imagine a world. That, yeah, I can't imagine a world where where Bo Baldwin takes over the the play calling duties. It just it worked tonight, uh, and we'll obviously see what happens against Cal next week. I do want to talk about the the man, the myth, the scat, because Cameron Scadaboo tonight was just a man amongst boys, and he did it from his back, the first carry. He was doing everything. I mean, he did it. Yeah, he was He was his team's offense. He was – I'm sorry, Drew. He was the best quarterback we had tonight. Damn. <laughs> I mean, Damn. Let's be real. Damn. He, he, he was the reason uh, offensively that this game was competitive, right? They were allowed – because of the kind of player that Cam Scadaboo is, they were allowed to do things that not every team can do, yeah. right? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously that last touchdown they scored – was 100% Cam Scadaboo manufactured, right? Yeah. Like, uh, uh, it, breaking two tackles, the, it, the balance on that was incredible. But everything from the punt to the, like, he has, he's had a, he's a, the best punter on this team. Like, Carlson has struggled this year punting the ball. Yeah. And 
all of a sudden he throw Skettable out there, he's putting it 53 yards. Like, it, it was it was just incredible that he, you know, it, it was, he was like the, the toy for Kenny, right? Like, all of this talk about Kenny calling the plays, how does that look if Skettable's yeah. not there? Because he was only able to do all of this stuff that made this game so interesting because, because of Scat. Sc- Cam Skettable. Oh, yeah. um, and, and so... Yeah, he was obviously the most important player for ASU offensively tonight, um, and it's going to be really interesting to see how they, they utilize him more. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I do feel like they got away from the rush attack a little bit too much, which so I'd like to see them go back to that a little bit more, but um, he's just he's a dog. Like, <laughs> there's not much more to it. He's just a dog. Look, that's the type of player that I think that – and not, not even that I think, that I know Kenny Dillingham wants. Yeah. Right, you want a guy – you want 11 Cam Scadaboos on offense. You want 11 Cam Scadaboos on yeah. defense because that's a guy that is going to give you everything he's got. And, look, there are times in practice where where, where Cam gets, like, he lets his emotion get to him sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But it's because he wants to win so badly. It's because he wants the ball in his hands so badly because, look, you saw what he was capable of doing yeah. it with, an, with the ball in his hands tonight. Right? This is a guy that only had five carries last week, which – after watching this game, How you're like, that is happen. unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Yeah. No, it is. It, 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 he is, at this point, the focal point of this offense, right? Um, they obviously have so many playmakers on the on the perimeter with their, their, their pass catchers, but this offense goes with Cam Scadaboo. Um so it, it's going to be really interesting to see how they utilize him. But he is, yeah, he really is, like you said, the kind of player that they that this team needs. He's the kind of guy that when he gets tackled, he's falling forward. He's always picking you up that one, two extra yards. I mean, honestly, that's how that touchdown happened, right? He was spinning forward just trying to pick up the first down, and then managed to stay on his feet somehow. Twice. I, twice, yeah. But, like, he, he is just that guy that is – he's not going to give up until he has been ta- – like, until he's got a knee on the ground and the whistle has been blown. He's pushing forward trying to get – every extra inch um and for a team like this that is going to be you know the underdog against a lot of teams like that's what they need they need guys that want it more than the than the players on the other side of the ball and i don't know that you can necessarily say that for everybody on asu but you can totally say that for camp skedaboo yeah no absolutely look i know there is a lot of positives to take away from this game and we're going to continue to get into it but i do want to talk about something that i think needs to be spoken about a little bit in terms of something that needs to be corrected from this team and i think they're careless with the football at yeah. times. Uh, and, you know, I know part of that has to deal with the quarterback situation. Uh, Arizona State, obviously, on their third quarterback, Jaden Rashada, obviously uh, out four to six weeks. But when you when you look at how this team could have stayed in the game and you look at the fact that at the end of the day, this was just a two-touchdown loss yeah. for Arizona State. Arizona State gave the ball away multiple times tonight. Yeah. You don't do that. We're talking about a completely different game. Yeah, I think so. And I don't want to. I don't want to be too hard on Drew Pine as far as that is concerned because I think when you're playing a team like USC and you're in the situation that ASU is, you, there's pressure on the quarterback to feel like he needs to to make something happen, right? And, and whether or not Drew Pine is the the quarterback that's capable of making something happen, there's a different conversation. Yeah. But he obviously was in a position where I felt like he he felt like he needed to make something happen, um, which obviously led to at, at least. I'm not going to blame him for, like, the fumble, right? That was just a good pass rush, yeah. whatever. Uh, but the interception, you can give him however much blame you want. It, it, yeah, you got to take care of the ball. Um, but I feel like there's a good time to credit the defense for what they have done on the other side of those turnovers throughout the year, right? Yeah. The, the, the touchdown that they gave up late in this game off of the off of the interception, I believe, was the first touchdown they had given up off of a turnover this year. Prior to that point, they'd only given up 15, 15 points off of the 10 turnovers that they had, which is incredible for the defense. Um, and so... But you, 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 it's not sustainable to keep putting the defense in that position no, where they have to no hold means. the team yeah. uh, to, to to a field goal or whatever it is. So, yeah, you're going to have to be, keep better care of the ball. But again, they're not playing USC every week. This is they're play, They played a team today where it felt like every time you gave USC the ball, they were going to score. Yeah. Which wasn't that ultimately what ended up happening. The defense did a great job in a lot of the situations, but you can't give Caleb Williams extra opportunities. No. Um, and there's a lot of really good quarterbacks in this conference, so it has to stop now. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you just look at what this ASU defense did tonight. And I know 42 points is a lot of points. Yeah. Like, I get it. Caleb not, by really, not really by USC standards. No, that's, and that's what I, that's what I want to get to, yeah. right? Like, you, you look at the track record. That's the fewest points that anyone's held USC to this season, right? And I know we just started conference play, but still, that is the fewest points that the Trojans have scored this season. You go back to last season, uh, Utah held them to 24 points. Notre Dame held them to 38 points. Like, 
that's good defense is still allowing them to find the end zone near where Arizona State was yeah. at. And then you look at the rest of the track record. They dropped 48 on UCLA, 55 on Colorado, 45 on Arizona. Uh, like, this is a team that is just – they're used to scoring a ton of points. Yeah. And at the end of the day, Kenny said it, you are not going to – stop Caleb Williams. No. The only thing that you could do is try and slow him down, and I think the defense, uh, they did their part. I think the offense did their part, too, to be honest with you. like I, This is not really a game that, like, you, you, at the end of it, you have, like, a specific villain that you could point to and be like, you're the reason we lost this game. Because I, regardless, yeah. regardless of the way that Drew Pine played down the stretch, Drew Pine is not the reason that Arizona State lost this football game tonight. In my personal opinion, Caleb Williams won this football game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, a better quarterback could have won this game for ASU, but I agree with you in the sense that, like, Caleb Williams won this game. Like, he was just not going to be denied. Yeah. Right? And so it was – it's tough. This was obviously always an uphill battle, but when you when you look at how we were talking about this game leading up to it, trying to be positive but being fully aware that there was a chance this ended up being a 50-10 to 10 game. Yeah. The fact that it wasn't, the fact that they scored multiple times in both halves – like, that's a W. No, right? yeah. It's a lot of small victories for ASU. Yeah. And look, Kenny said it, and we'll get to hopefully some sound uh, a little bit later in the show, but Kenny talked about it in his press conference. He said, tonight is not a moral victory, but we got better as a team. Quote, you should never be happy losing uh, in football. Yeah, they shouldn't be, but I will be. Like, I'll be, I'll, I will be. I'll be happy with what I saw tonight, right? Like, yeah, I think from Kenny's perspective, right, you can't be happy with a loss, especially when you consider that they were in this game. Um, and you can't be happy with what you want to be. Yeah, no, no, but... As a fan, like all ah, you want bad. in this season is to, is, is week to week progress, a reason to believe exactly. that they are going to be able to compete in a given week, a reason to show up to the stadium, a reason to turn on the game. Um, and ASU gave you that this week. And if you disagree, then you're wrong. Yeah. Like like ASU gave you a reason to be tuning into these games because again, you're not playing Caleb Williams every week. And which is not to say that you have a, a plethora of easy opponents coming in the Pac-12 because that's not true. But you're not playing a quarterback as good as Caleb Williams. Um, so, you know, it's if you can do this against USC, look what, what you can do against Cal. Yeah, look I what mean, you can do against Arizona. Well, look I what mean, you can do against Colorado. Just that. Like, yeah, what can you do against a team like I forget who else they put, but like, what can you do against some of those middle UCLA. of the pack? Yeah, exactly. The yeah. UCLA team that did not was in, was incapable of putting up points on, on on Utah today. Yeah, right. Like, it's you have a reason to believe that maybe you know we were at a point where after the Fresno State game, it felt like they were going one and eleven. I don't feel that way anymore. No. I feel like they're going to figure out a way to, to win at least two more games, maybe three. And I think when you look at where we were last week, that is a, a massive W. The house was on fire in tonight's game. You, you got your first glimpse of you, you heard, the fire hose. You, yeah. well, you, no, heard the you, you heard the sirens around the, the corner. The, the buildings down the streets are flashing red and exactly. white. You know, or red and yellow, red and blue. Help Jeez. is on the way. You know they're coming. Help yeah. is on the way. That's exactly what it was. Look, guys, we're going to continue this conversation, but let's go ahead and get to the numbers of tonight's game. Look, there's a lot that we could talk about and that we will, but you know, you know the the spiel, Sean. Yeah. The matter, the, the the number that matters most here is that final score. 42 points for USC to Arizona State's 28. In terms of the total yards, the Trojans putting up an astounding 535. I say astounding, but usually that's their average. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that's below the their year. average. I think they were averaging damn near 600 yards on the 353 year. 353 total yards for Kenny Dillingham in the ASU offense. Now, the Sun Devils did turn it over twice to USC's single turnover. Looking at the third downs, ASU was 6 of 16 on third down conversions. USC 4 of 11. And then the penalties, ASU, four penalties, 27 yards. The Trojans, 10 penalties for 85. Shout out the fans because yeah. a lot of those were caused by them. Sean, which number stands out the most to you? I mean, uh, I don't I, – either the third down or the penalties, to be quite Because, I mean, to me that shows that, like, ASU – ASU had the edge in some parts of this game. Yeah. And that was certainly not the case for Fresno State, right? Like, Fresno State – I don't want to say Fresno State dominated, but the ASU got beat in every facet of that Fresno State game. Um, and that wasn't the case today, right? They, they they were really disciplined. They were not making really stupid mistakes, which we've seen this team in recent years do plenty of, uh, which is an encouraging sign, uh, especially in a game that was as emotionally charged as this one. You saw the guys on the sideline the whole time being hyped, right? And so this was a very emotional game against a very tough opponent, and they, they kept their composure, which I think is really important. Um and then the fact that they, you know, that that 
they were able to find some success on third downs. Keep yeah. drives alive. Not great numbers, I believe 6 for 11, right? Or 6 for 16, whatever it was. But still, the fact that they were able to, on a couple of occasions, see something positive, yeah. right? See that they are capable of converting on third down, keeping drives alive. Again, it's something to build off of for next week and for the rest of the season. Um, and that's all you could really ask for against USC. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're having a drink tonight. Uh, and I, I know it was a loss, but we're still out here having a, a grand old time over at Illegal Pete's. And we're going to see which ASU player got themselves maybe their own drink and bottle service. But before we get to that, I want to tell you guys a little bit about our friends over at FOCO, guys. It's it's not even football season. It's sports season. It is. You got baseball. I, you I was got betting on football. preseason hockey last night. Basketball's right around the corner. Mm. Like, guys, FOCO, they are the leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise, guys, with a product line that includes apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, novelty items, and more. The best officially licensed gear for all sports and fandoms. And they've got Aloha shirts. they got straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a football game, uh, a baseball game, a basketball game. It really doesn't matter. They got it all, guys. FOCO always has our back for Arizona sports, and they have yours, too. Get the best gear around by visiting www.foco.com and using that code PHNX. For all non-pre-sale items, use the promo code PHNX for 10% off. And the sports season not only means sports merch, but we're getting the chat going on in the background. Shout out to ASU fans. Or no, those are USC fans, boo. Fuck um, you guys are getting made fun of for nursing your drinks. I mean, we're trying to do a show, bro. Okay, I'm sorry, Donald. You finish yours while I do this ad read. Um, the, another great part about <laughs> about sports season is that you can make money on sports. And the best part about making money on sports, you know, like like betting on sports is plenty of fun. But when you can be better than other people and make money on sports, okay, damn, I wasn't being serious, but go off. Okay, go toe tree, go toe tree, go. Um, this is the issue, though, is I don't have a way to get another one. Yeah, that is a problem. You see what you did, Donald? Anyways, um... We got a chance for you to make some real money on sports. Put your sports knowledge to the test against us. We got a weekly pick X and an NFL Survivor contest with our friends over at Splash Sports. You can head to splashsports.com slash PHNX. The link is in our description. And sign up. Deposit cash to get started. And it's just $5 to enter. Um, like I said, we got a couple different contests. Weekly contests all year long. So make sure you keep that link handy. You got to know. Don't miss a contest because that's, that's, you're taking money out of your own pocket. And that's absurd. Make your money. Beat us in, in some contests. So head to splashsports.com slash PHNX to join in. We'll have different contests coming out, so we are stoked to compete with, with and, more importantly, because I hate you all. Just kidding. I just like beating you against you all. Um, be sure to click our link in the description. Shout out Splashboards. Shout out Splashboards. All right. I finished my drink. Let's see which ASU football gets a drink in honor of their performance. I don't think there's any questions to ask, guys. It's Cam Scadaboo. He's getting bottle service tonight. My goodness, he's got 190 yards, two touchdowns, 42 pass yards, one punt, and one fucking Heisman Trophy after <laughs> tonight. Are you kidding to extend, me? I wanted to extend the sign, but I couldn't <laughs> feasibly make it happen. Cam Scadaboo was a man amongst boys tonight. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said earlier, he was the best player on the field for ASU today. Um, you knew this game was going to be a little weird Yeah. early on when you saw – you know, it was fourth down, and Cam was in the shotgun, but a little further back than a quarterback normally would be. And I was like, he's going to punt this. Yeah. He's going to punt this. And then he did. <laughs> and then it just kept on rolling, and it was a 53-some yard punt. Um, I Between that, obviously, the touchdown at the end of the game, you know, it was it's funny because we were at a point where we were like, uh, you know, if they don't score on this drive, we're going to leave. And then Cam Scadaboo just has one of the best touchdowns. On fourth down. On fourth down that we've seen in a while for an ASU player. Um, it... I mean, like I said earlier, he, the ASU offense goes as Cam Scadaboo goes. Yeah. Uh, you need to feed him the ball because he's a dog. He's gonna. He's going to. Not only is he going to, you know, get those extra yards, but I, his drive, the way he runs, I feel like adds so much energy to this offense, motivates the other guys to, to you know, take that extra step. And so he, he's just so crucial. And you saw that tonight. If you put your your fifty, sixty year old dad in a living room and you turn on Arizona State football and he watches Cam Scadaboo run the football. New that favorite is, player. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. Because that's a guy that fucking runs hard. It's like, that's, that's what football, that's that, that's, football that's was when tough, I was tough, hard-nosed yeah. football. That's that's yeah. exactly yeah. what Scadaboo does. This is a guy that, at times, like, he is shifty. 
He's shiftier than people think he is. Exactly, yeah. He's, he's got great balance. He put, he put the uh, linebacker that we don't really he talk about on put, skates. He put one specific former one specific Sun Devil, former Sun Devil on skates. He, he, he left his ankles over at the line of scrimmage. You know, you know what happens. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's just – he's great, man. Like, it is – it is awesome. Like that's the one thing about ASU football is as bad as it, it can be, as bad or great at any time. They always got that. They got a running back. Dog. What are you drinking, Kodri? Strawberry Mark. Yeah, strawberry. Yeah, figured, yeah, strawberry Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Cam Scadaboo was. Uh, a, he was a legend. And look, I, I this offense. I am really excited to see when uh, we get to Carlos Brooks back. Yeah. Because uh, he's another guy that is going to help this offense. Kyson Brown, he, he I know only had two carries, 19 yards, but he, he was, yeah. He, he looked good. He did look good. And, and I think there was uh, another attempted scadaboo pass that, yeah. that just was just like just out of his fingertips, right? Almost a right? touchdown pass. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it is. And I think it's another important thing to remind people, not that the ASU fans, ASU fans don't know, but they – this isn't the right – like, this is their team, right? <laughs> like, if everything is going right, if Kenny is putting his ideal guys out there, he's got a different quarterback. He's got two or three different offensive linemen. Yeah. Uh, he's got a different backup running back, which is not a, a shot at any of the guys that were playing, but, like, just to say they were this competitive without the guy that they yeah. would probably prefer to be start playing quarterback, without their starting tackle in the side glass, right? Like, all of these things. So – to, for them to be able to do this, considering all the things that they have gone through, considering the fact that this this offense has not has not been working together for a full offseason like USC's offense has been, right? Because they they haven't been dealing with injuries in the way ASU's offense has. They've got their starting quarterback. They've got their starting receivers. They've got their starting. I gotta take back. these off. It's just they're hurting my head, man. <laughs> <laughs> so like it, it it is it as they hopefully get healthier as the season goes along. This team is going to get better on top of them just. You know, having a, a, a better play calling on top of them just gaining more confidence. This team, I think, is going to – right, we talked about it. They always got one upset. They didn't get it today, so where is it going to come? Because it, it now I now feel I confident I want it. that this team could do it. I know where I want where it. Where is that? I want it in fucking two weeks right yeah, back yeah, here yeah. at Mountain America Stadium when upset? Colorado no, comes no, to Colorado town. Colorado might not be hey, that good. This is, this is your, uh, your Saturday reminder that the Arizona State Sun Devils scored more points tonight uh, in the first quarter than Colorado did all game against Oregon. So I just had to leave that out there. Shout out to uh, GM Saul Bookman, who has my notifications on for apparently, any time. <laughs> apparently. It's <laughs> crazy. Homeboy it's not, t- homeboy it's t- not just you. He comes after anybody. But no, no, no. Homeboy good. tweeted about, he tweeted that exact fact out. Within 30 seconds, Saul was in it. Like, no no joke. Within, a, under a minute, And I Saul didn't even, I didn't even have to defend Saul, it. Saul defends Colorado more than he defends U of A. I didn't even have to defend it. I had, he has shooters. I had shooters in the chat ready to fucking fire for me. So shout out everybody that was, was uh I will say this, Twitter as far as Colorado is concerned, Oregon, Oregon, if they're not the best team in the conference, they're the second best team in the conference. And they've got maybe, if not the best quarterback in the conference, the second best quarterback in the conference. Well, shout out Michael Penix. I can't do him like that. But yeah, averaging 400 pass yards and three dog, touchdowns a game. Dog. But Bo Nix is probably going to end up winning the Heisman this year. I think he, he's one of the favorites right now. Um, so I'm not ready to completely be like, Colorado is the worst team in the league. Told you. Um, you know. LTC in the chat. Hit that like button for Totri, Sean, and Cam. Yeah. If and you're Bobby not, Hurley Jr. If you're not doing it, yeah, well, we got a story for y'all. Yeah, we do. Uh, if, if you're not hitting that like button for me, Jacob, Sean, Danielle, do it for Cam Scadaboo. He deserves it. Man, like, a man was just different tonight. I feel like I don't have, a, I don't have a, a better word than, like, he was just <laughs> different. 40, the fact that we have... 42 pass yards on this grab. Like, I didn't even fully notice that the first time I came up. That, that fourth down so was fun. wild, dude. That it was fourth so and five on your your side of the field. The and you say. leading passer for the first half. Yeah. For this team. Yeah. Uh, which is not good, but also awesome. But if you, and again, look, we'll, I want to get in a heat, it, heat index here in a second. But look, I know Drew Pine's going to get a lot of flack for tonight uh, because there were, you know, uh, it, it, there were a lot of missed opportunities. Yeah. Uh, I think that was that was the big issue with me. Like, if you look at a lot of his throws, I, I don't think, like, yeah, there were some here or there that I think he'd obviously want back, but it was the missed opportunities in certain situations where I was like, even if you complete it and you get three, four, five yards and it's not a big hitter, right? It, it's yeah. It changes that. It right, changes the, the one, drive. The one kind of screen pass they had off to the right he to Jalen, yeah. and he just missed it. Uh, and it was, there was so much space. So much space, space. Right, yeah. And so, I don't know. I do think Drew Pine deserves 
He deserves a little oh, bit of flack for tonight. I, I would argue he deserves a lot, but like I said earlier, there's not really any point in wasting time on that because this was such a good performance from ASU. And yeah. again, they lost by 14 points, and I'm fucking chilling. No, <laughs> like, not their their first choice at quarterback, no, right? And no. So, so I, I don't know. And I also want to. USC is still the fifth ranked team in the country, right? I know we talk a lot about their defense not being good. That's by top 10 standards, right? Yeah. They, 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 they still are a very good football team. And so Drew Pine struggling against USC, there was a lot, you know, uh, there was plenty to be concerned about, but I, I'm not going to be like, I'm not completely out, right? If, if Borgay, for example, is not ready next week, I, I'm not out necessarily. I'm not I'm not chalking this up to be a loss automatically no. just because Drew Pine is a quarterback, no. right? I think he's going to get better week to week as well. Um, so it, it was unfortunate that I, I, I do feel like he could have if he had a better performance, ASU at the very, ASU wins this game or at the very least keeping competitive to the last second. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I know. Sharing in the chat, Pine's biggest issues was holding on to the ball too long. Our O-line is not going to give that not give him that time right now. Yeah, look, this that, is not the Notre true. Dame offensive yeah. line. And uh, that's one thing that we said when he when he ran the ball, because he only really did it like one time. Yeah. Do that more, homeboy. That's the one thing that, that that's the one thing that you do better than any of the other other quarterbacks on this roster is get outside of the pocket, and use your feet, use your athleticism. Yeah. And I don't feel like he does that enough. Um, especially considering that he's not if we're being honest, not the not the best passer. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the athleticism is what you have to your advantage. I would like to see him use that more if he's playing quarterback. Look, this is this is what I'll say about it before we get in a heat index, right? If you're watching this game and you take away the number in front of USC and you watch this game from start to finish, you couldn't tell that they were number five and you couldn't tell that ASU was unranked. No, I mean, honestly, if, if when we do our Pac-12 power rankings later this week, USC is not number one. Oh my Daniel, Daniel, you, are a, you are a legend. You are a legend. Um, look at that's what. That's just being a part of PHNX Sports is awesome. This dog. is family. This family. This is family. Family. Shout out! Um, shout out, BK. If you know, you know. Sean and to- Sean Totry, tell me I won't open another beer at three a.m. and post a video of me shot. You won't. You just, won't. You won't, Donald. Donald, if you do that, if you do that, do that Donald, we're gonna get it on the show. If you won't do it, Donald. <laughs> you won't do it, Donald. No, nah, look, it is an absolutely phenomenal performance. I know it was an L, and there's eh, a loss is a loss. Yeah, at the end of the day, they're one, one but, three. But there are so many positives, and there are guys trending in the right directions, not named Cam Scadaboo. So let's go ahead and get in a heat index uh, because there are a couple guys who definitely uh, deserve some love tonight. I want to start with a guy on the defensive side of the ball in, in Tate Romney. This is a guy that... You know, going into the season, I think there were a lot of eyes on Will Schaefer to start opposite Trey Brown. Uh, but Tate Romney definitely put in some work tonight. He was all over the field. Uh, he looks statistically seven total tackles, five solo, one TFL, one QB hurry. Uh, Tate Romney was a difference maker on defense for ASU tonight. Yeah, they, did he have a fumble recovery or almost had a fumble almost recovery? Almost had a fumble yeah, recovery. Was, uh, well, ended up not being a fumble. But, yeah, I feel like by and large – the linebackers just have not been talked about yeah, on this team. That's right? There's a lot of focus on on good or bad, the secondary and the, the defensive line, but the linebackers have gone largely untalked about, unnoticed, yeah. and I think understandably for a, to a certain extent, right, when you come off of a, off of a year where you had guys like Merlin and, and Soli, right, guys that are, are pretty established, there's a little bit of turnover in that position group, it's a little yeah. bit of a question mark, but Tate, Take that guy, man. Like they, they, they. I think the defense is just better than people expected. Yeah, um, and that doesn't happen without good linebackers, and then Tate's a big part of that. Let's go ahead and get to the the second player before we bring in uh, the one, the only Taylor here. I, w- I want to give some love to a guy uh, in, in Elijah Badger because Elijah yeah. Badger was an absolute animal uh, when it comes to heat index. This is a guy that, if I asked you how many catches Elijah Badger had tonight, how much would you say? Six. He had nine catches. Damn. Damn. Nine catches for 88 yards in a touchdown on 14 targets. Averaged almost a first down per catch. Elijah Badger, again, this is a guy that came in clutch for Arizona State. He's one of their best offensive weapons. Uh, and when Bo Baldwin was calling the plays, it didn't necessarily feel like he was getting uh, his fair share of targets. Uh, that changed with Kenny calling the plays, and I think it's going to be something to keep an eye True. on down the line. Uh, I do want to bring in Taylor here because Taylor was at the the post game press conference. Taylor, what was just the vibe 
at the post-game press conference for the players and for Kenny. Oh. Looks like we're struggling with the audio here. Might be a mic issue. Might be a mic. Let's see if we can get this resolved here in a quick second. Um, let's try now. Talk for hello? us, Taylor. Let's see if we got your audio. Hello, 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 hello. Still no. It's tragic. I don't know. It says that we got levels. I just can't hear over here. Yeah, I just can't. Jacob, you can't hear her either? Okay. Okay. Taylor, why don't you leave the call and we'll have you call back in and we'll see if that changes it at all, if we can get your audio working okay. here. Uh, but, yeah, back to back to a guy in Elijah Badger that was just phenomenal. Uh, and, and, you know, he wasn't the only offensive weapon. There was yeah. another guy by the name of Jalen Conyers, our guy, yeah. number 12, who it was nice to see fucking play a full game. Yeah. Jalen, yeah, yeah, let's well. fucking go. You you actually stayed on the field the whole time tonight, man. <laughs> Come on, That's dude, awesome. Man. That's awesome. Hey, he's a tank of a human being. You think you do a little better job at Five catches, 71 yards. And the, the, the best part about it is we – me – me, Shane, and Sean have a group chat. <laughs> and we always, at all times, if we're ever watching the game together, it is always, if ASU needs something big, they need something different, right? Yeah. And it's always, hey, Sean, Jalen Conyers, he's due. Jalen he's Conyers due. is due. Everybody says For it. For the record, this started back in softball. This started, started back Sid in Sanders softball. And company. Uh, damn. I just, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Damn, 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 damn. damn. Ah oh, man, ASU softball good. was so fun that year. Anyways, yeah, Jalen's our guy, right? And and we we coming into the season, he was the guy that was going yeah. to push this offense forward, right? Yeah. And uh, I think if this offense really wants to like take it to a next level, yeah, they need to get the ball to who I think is their most. You know, I give Cam, Cam a lot of love as being the best player on this offense, which I think he was today and has been throughout this season. But Jalen is the most talented football player on this offense. Yeah. Um, and you need to get him the ball if you want to have success. And they did a little bit better of a job, a little bit better of a job doing that today. And they also, like you said, he stayed on the field. Yeah. Uh, and those are both big victories. Again, I think as this, this team goes along, Kenny gets more comfortable calling plays and stuff like that. They'll, they'll do a better job of getting the ball. There. Yeah. No, absolutely. All right. Taylor, do we have you or do we not? Let's see. Can you hear? Can you Let's hear? go. Yes, we can. Let's go. Let's go. We can hear Taylor. Oh my goodness! <laughs> All right, Taylor. Yeah. What, what was just the vibe? So what was the vibe? Right Obviously, Cam Scadaboo, Tate Romney speaking, uh, and Kenny Dillingham post game. Just what was the vibe yes. uh, from those guys? Yeah. So, um, like I was saying, the vibes were honestly so much better than they were previous weeks. Um, the guys were definitely looking a lot more forward towards the rest of their season. They weren't quite as down as they have been the past couple of weeks. Um, Dillingham, you know, he was proud of his squad. He was proud of what they could pull together, but he's not proud necessarily of not winning. He said, you know, this is a feel good, a feel good game for ASU, but we're not good if we're not winning. Yeah. No, absolutely. You, you can't be happy uh, with a loss by any means. Obviously, Cam Scadaboo uh, was a, a different kind of animal tonight for Arizona State. I know he spoke post game. Uh, what did he have to say? Yeah, Cam was <laughs> Cam was very excited about his performance. He was excited to be able to kind of utilize all of his skills. Um, he said that the last time he hunted was high school. Um, so he just <laughs> randomly threw that in there tonight. He actually said that he might get in trouble tomorrow during practice because that was not planned. Um, the punt was not just, planned. The punt was not planned. Huh. Huh. Now, yes. to be a He's running back that <laughs> goes out of your way and just like, fuck it, I'm punting the ball. That's a crazy move. I respect the <laughs> hell out of it. Shout out, Cam. It ended up working. It was the best punt ASU had all night. All God. season, maybe. God. Scadaboo has some cojones yeah, to do that, man. was just in him, and, and he made made eye contact, and he went for it. So, Wow. wow. That's crazy. Was Kenny <laughs> asked at all about uh, just continuing play calling and just, I guess, the offense moving forward? Yeah, so Kenny definitely, not so much Kenny, but um, Scadabo was very excited about where this offense is going. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they got to do a lot of different play calls. They got to do a lot of new things tonight that they haven't been able to do. Yeah. Um, Kenny also talked about, you know, being excited about what he saw tonight on the defensive end. Um, but he did also say that 
that was not enough coming from the defensive end. Um, he noted that Wednesday, Wednesday is usually ASU's um, defensive practice. And he said it was the worst defensive showing at practice all year <laughs> long, which nice. certainly showed tonight as well. Like, yeah. He was not super stoked about that. Yeah. No, I mean, at, at all times, you obviously don't want to see your team give up 42 points, uh, especially against a guy – the reigning Heisman winner in Caleb Williams. Taylor, before we get you out of here, I'm just curious. Like, we, we were obviously all on the press conference uh, together. Uh, what was your takeaway uh, from the game tonight? I think for me, I was very excited. Yeah. Um, as was the guys in the locker room afterwards. They felt hope for the first time. They were excited to see the crowd. I was excited to see the crowd. As I tweeted earlier, they all stayed during <laughs> halftime, yeah. post halftime, which is huge. Um, and that was honestly probably the biggest point of the press conference was, you know, if we can bring in fans, if we can hype up our team, then this is how they are going to continue to play. Yeah. No, yeah. Absolutely. I think hope is the biggest thing, right? Like, obviously, again, loss is a loss, but you have something to believe that you are going to be like a respectable football team going yeah. forward, which was not the case after last year. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Taylor, thanks so much for hopping out. We really appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it was, I mean, look, it, she hit the nail on the head there in terms of, like, there are a lot of things to be hopeful for, and I think it, this, it was, ASU fans were so down yeah. after last week that this no, is I just mean, like, I know we terrible. were joking, right? We were joking of, like, oh, if they score, we're going to play the wind music. But, like, yeah. they look. The, it was more than just competence. It was it was competitiveness. Yeah, they looked like a good football team, right? It did. It, it, it and it's. I don't. I don't want to keep bagging on them, but like it, it really raises the question. Like if they had a, a if they had better quarterback. I don't want to say a better quarterback. If they had a better quarterback play, like what this team would have accomplished. Like that's a good way to put it. It, 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 it is. They looked like a real football team. They looked like they could compete. They look like you could put them against anybody in the country and they're not going to get embarrassed. Yeah. Right? Like, they, they are going to look like a real football team. I'm not – and don't misconstrue that. I don't think this team is competing with Georgia, so relax. But I think, by and large, you put them against a lot of the teams, specifically in this conference, they're going to look competitive. And that is all you can ask for a team that is ultimately – worse than a lot of the teams are going to be playing like if i this, this is this is how i want to put it to fans because there are still going to be a lot of people that uh, that watch the game and on social media they're going to be really really upset and there's going to be a lot of people that just look at the score if, if, really if you well even that if you're upset about the score then you don't know football and you don't know where this is like <laughs> you also don't realize that they scored zero points last week let's wipe away everything that's happened this mm -hmm. season kenny dillingham is hired in in december or whatever it is and i sit there and i tell you look in week four Arizona State is going to lose by 14 points to the number five team in the nation with yeah. the reigning Heisman quarterback winner. Yeah. No, no, no. You take that 100. That's like, a fucking dub. You're yeah, taking I mean, that as a win. Obviously, rather the win, right? But, I mean, if you yeah, if you tell me that they're going to just be competitive. Like, if you tell me that it's going to get to the second half, and I think ASU might win this football game. Like, that is, that's a massive W that I, I don't think. Like, if you're being honest, you could not have reasonably expected. We didn't. No. We, we did our prediction no. earlier in the week. We did not expect a performance like this from ASU. We really did expect, you know, two touchdowns at most. And that was, I think, us being a little hopeful. We were just to kind of like they have to score twice, right? They got to figure that out, right? And, and, but that, it was way more than that, like you said. They, they looked like a just a really effective football team on both sides of the They're ball. They're going to put it together. They, I know that they gave up 48 points. but it, 42. The, or 42, excuse me. Yeah, but the defense looked good, man. Like the defense, they got stops at big moments. They, they kept the team in the game. Uh, which a lot of guys, teams haven't been able to do. Yeah. Stopping Caleb Williams even once is a victory. No, you're um, absolutely the right. The fact that Caleb Williams had to play the entire game, that's a victory. That, he I, has think, not I think done that's that the first once. time. Yeah, this, that's he the first done time. That once this year. Yeah, that's a massive victory. So, again, loss is a loss, but there's so many positive takeaway. And, again, you're not playing USC every single week. Yeah. You're going to have chances to win games in this conference this year, and that is so good considering that I did not think that was possible a week Look, ago. Look, man, I, I, I feel good about it. I feel good about it. I know a loss is a loss. That's, that's the theme of it. That's what we've talked about. Whatever. We're going to continue the conversation. We've also got some sound. Uh, thanks to Taylor from those post-game press conferences that we're going to get to here in a little bit. So stick around. Listen uh, to, to what Kenny and Scadaboo had to say. But first, uh, you know, everybody says you look good, you feel good, you play good. Mm-hmm. 
we feel good, mm -hmm. we play good, mm -hmm. and we look even better mm -hmm. when we have our Shady Rays True. on. That's why I was rocking the Shady Rays for the first 25 minutes True. of the show, because you can never go wrong with Shady Rays. Guys, they're more than just a company. They family. are they are family. family. They are family, and you can get them anywhere, specifically uh, at that new location, the Kierlin Commons, a full-stop shop for all things Shady Rays, guys. And part of the great thing about family is they're open. Right, they're mm. not. They're not just gonna sit here and they're not gonna throw you out to the wolves when you need maybe a new pair of sunglasses. Oh, you right, got a nicer family than I do. <laughs> if you don't love your shady rays, guys, you can exchange for a new pair or you can return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop, guys. Their team always has your back and exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays mm. is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to shadyrays.com. Com and use that code PHNX for 50% off two-plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself. The shade's rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Yeah. Um, I br brought this up to you. You saw that Mad Dog clip, right? I, I did see that right? Mad Dog clip. Mad Dog, was, Mad Dog was talking about his, his perfect Sunday, yeah. right? He hits noon. He makes himself a little early cocktail. Yeah. Gets the gummy, cuts it in half. He knew Watches he was the first slate of games, gets to the second slate, takes the other half of the gummy. I think we need to send our man Mad Dog some OGs. I think... I don't know if Mad Dog can handle the OGs. I don't know if Mad Dog can handle the OGs because um, they are – I mean, they get the job done because at the end of the day, they are the best scratch-made gummies they in the state of Arizona. So they're, the, they're the Caleb Williams. They're the Caleb Williams of, of, of scratch-made scratch gummies. gummies. Yeah. It is a fact of the matter. Um, they've got some for everybody, even even Mad Dog. Um, variety packs of their fruits, variety packs of their, their creams. They've got the the one-to-one -one CBD THC ratio, the happy balance. they got the sleepy time gummies. They've got it all. So shout out our friends over at Illegal Pete's. Uh, or jeez, whoa, illegal piece. We're at illegal piece. Shout out our friends at illegal beats, but also shout out our friends over at OGs. Check out our friends at OGs brands for yourself and try one or a few of their many delicious flavors. Check them out across all socials at OGs brands and online at ogsbrands.com to find them at a local dispensary near you. You must be 21 plus to enjoy responsibly. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and, and get into aftertaste for the evening. Sean, what was gently placed on the tip of the wet muscle in your mouth? You know, um, this is tough because I'm trying to think of something that, like, is bad but also really good. Yeah. Honestly, it just tasted like a soda. Like, at the end of the day, it's it's you did lose. It's not good for you. But it tasted pretty good. Yeah, like, I was happy yeah. about it in the moment. At the end of the day, I might be sad that we are ultimately lost. The, you know, at the end, when I'm looking at the record, it's going to be a loss, not a win. I'll be sad about that. But. At the time, the Sprite tastes pretty fucking good, man. Look, you know what this tastes like to me as somebody who's been drinking Margs mm. all night? It, this is absolutely tequila to me. Mm. Because, look, the, the taste of it necessarily, if you're not a big tequila person, then it's an ugh, right? You, you have a sip and you're yeah. like, oh, it's a tequila shot. Yeah. Because you're like, this tastes like shit. And that's what a loss should feel like. But at the end of the day, it gets the job yeah. done. It tastes, and honestly, I'm going to change my aftertaste. It tastes like that first wait, sip wait, of wait, water. Wait. Keep going, keep going. It tastes like that first sip of water after. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, you're I such you. a good, you're such a good man. Um, it tastes like that first sip of water the morning after a night out, right? Because it's Ooh. like it tastes good. You needed it, but ultimately you still feel like shit because mm -hmm. you know you got your ass kicked the night before. But and usually it's like room temp water. Yeah, but yeah. It, it was at, in the moment. It kept you breathing. It kept you alive. Yeah, give you a, a reason to live. <laughs> Gives you a reason to live. <laughs> Never, never knew that tequila would be the reason. Well, I was saying water. Oh well, yeah, I guess that's that's fair. <laughs> we have a special video of somebody who has an aftertaste. Oh goodness! Mm. I, let let's see it. Let's let's go ahead and, and see what Donald has for us. Let's go, Donald. This better not be weak, Donald. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There okay. we go. Okay. Rocking it in the okay. jersey too. Let's go, Donald. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. There we go, Donald. Yeah, God, hell that yeah, was baby. fun. That was good. That was absolutely fucking Make sure you stay tuned. We got something else for you, Donald. Pete's is closing here soon, so okay. do you want to get to your audio now? Yeah, let's go ahead uh, and, and see what Kenny Dillingham had to say post game about this loss to USC. Um, as soon as. There we go. There we go. We're working. Loud. Third and 20, the first drive with two penalties. Like. That was just as much important. That was just as important to winning this game than anything I've done to my that I've done in my meeting rooms and my players because they go out there and they know it cares and they feed off the energy and there's actually a competitive advantage when we have everybody in the stands. It's an advantage. So to see all the fans in the stands like that, to see the valley like that, that's what we need every game. And if we get that every game, you're gonna get the play that you guys want every game, or at least I hope. 
That's fair, dude. That's fucking fair. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard to argue with it. You can't. You can't argue with that. It's the first time they had a sold-out crowd, or, or at the very least, a, a damn near sold-out crowd. And it was the best performance they've had all year. It's just a fact of the matter. You you could tell that they fed off the. I mean, again, Jalen talked about it on the high point. They get a spe- when they walk out and they're staring down the field at the student section and they can feel the energy in the crowd. It it, it takes them to a different place, and you saw that tonight. It is the great equalizer. It's the home field advantage, um, and you got that tonight. Oh, I was talking about a pre- pleasantly surprised. This was an ASU crowd. This was yeah. not a. This yeah. was not a crowd that was 50-50 or anything. This was an a. This was a home field advantage for the Sun Devils and they need that every week because you saw what it did you saw that it it, it, it created penalties for the other team it it, it gave them energy the the, the, the sideline had more energy in this game than I had seen them had yeah on opening day right like it, it it was unbelievable um and that is a testament to the Sun Devils fans to the student section who showed up in in droves like it, y'all need to show up and support this team because you see what it, what happens when you do they play better football. This no, you're is, absolutely it's just right. How that goes? You're absolutely right, and and it definitely should be um, <laughs> the, the the mantra. Long time no see. The mantra moving forward. Uh, let's see what Cam Scadaboo had to say post game. Um, it was super aggressive. Um, I mean, we we ran the ball a lot more than we have in the past. Um, we were downhill attack. We knew we could run the ball on these guys, and um, it's, it was working. So we stuck with it. Uh, we called our shots when our shots needed to be called. We had, we had a couple mistakes um, that kind of bit us towards the end of the game. But, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy for the most part of the defense and the offense really coming together a lot more than the last three weeks. Um, on the sidelines felt more, more of a family out there, um, tighter knit, a lot more energy. Um, it was beautiful out there with all the fans still, still there. You know, when I come out of halftime and I see everybody still on the sidelines or everyone's still in the fans, it's like these, they believe in us. So. Um, that was good to see, but yeah, it was nice to see the play calling being aggressive and um, using using his players as, as much as he could. I mean, he he's absolutely right, and I think you know I'm gonna pat myself on the back here um, off of that soundbite because the three people that were doing post game availability were Cam Scadaboo, who got our bottle service. <laughs> it was our Elijah it was Badger, our heat index, who wasn't got it? heat index, it and was. then Tay Romney, who got heat index. Yeah, that's as funny. Well. That's funny. It's funny because. One thing that stuck out to me about that clip is when Cam mentioned about how it felt like more of a family on the yeah. sideline. Tate, like, instinctively started nodding his head. Yeah. And I think that is that is a sign to me that, like, there is things changing. They, that they are in a different it's place culture. than they were it's fucking week culture. one, right? Yeah. And and then as to the play calling, right? Like, I mean, it didn't take a rocket science to see that this is the most aggressive they've been all year. And they've been in a long time as a program. Um, and, again, that's why they were able to stay competitive in Look. this game championships and all that fun stuff they're fun to celebrate but nothing brings people together more than adversity true. uh and, and having to fight next to one another week after week Very true. Uh, when it gets tough so i, I think you're going to continue to see that uh from the sun devils guys tomorrow it's sunday mm. you've got nfl football or if you're listening to this on sunday pull out your phone right now okay because you can bet on some football, and you can True. do it over at BetMGM. They got this this great little offer where you're gonna bet ten dollars, and they're just gonna give you two hundred because they're good people. Uh, you can get this offer. Download the BetMGM sportsbook app on iOS or Android, or visit BetMGM.com and sign up with that promo code PHNX. Sign up and deposit at least ten dollars in your newly created account. Place a wager in the amount of at least ten bones at standard odds. Price a qualifying. Bet, and once you place a qualifying bet, you guys are going to receive $200 in bonus bets, regardless of your wager. Look, I've got some some bets that I've already cooked up, some parlays Ooh, that I've already cooked up for Sunday is what I do because they give me free money. I don't even got to – like, mm-hmm. they just give me bonus bets. And it's not just because they feel bad for me because I keep handing them money because I don't win. But <laughs> you guys can win. I promise you can win. And – even if you don't win, that offer that I just told you about, you're going to get free money to play with. Guys, sign up again uh, for BetMGM. Use that bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app of at least $10. You guys are going to receive $200. So true, I swear to God instantly. himself, if the Chargers in don't win. In additional winnings, regardless <laughs> of your wager's outcome, check out the show notes for full details. And now, listen to Big Pokey talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y 
467-369 New York. Call 1-800-327-5050 Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help Michigan. 1-800-981-0023 Puerto Rico in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. Or Ontario. Ontario. Um, obviously, we're here at Illegal Peace drinking our Mars, but one of the many things I love about Illegal Peace, one of the many, many things I love about Illegal Peace, is they, they got a full bar. They do. But you can get Marg, or I see it from here. You can get Wow, which is the best p- beer amongst the many great beers that Four Piece has to offer. World. I would agree. I genuinely, it, I, like, there's these moments where, like, I'm doing an ad read and then I need, kind of need to stop because I feel like, you know, people just listen to it and it's like, ah, oh, they're just doing an ad read. I need to tell you, like, I genuinely no do. Time. I genuinely do believe. Stop it, Jacob. This is for the sponsors. I genuinely do believe that Wow was the best beer I've ever had. Hey, I no, do seriously. genuinely believe that. Uh, so our friends at Four Peaks, they're just the best, and they've got some great stuff going on um, at their Eighth Street Pub in Tempe. Um, you know, Steinholding, Oktoberfest, all those great things. So make sure you check out our friends at Four Peaks. Visit fourpeaks.com slash located to find all your favorite brewery tours and events. Steinholding, Oktoberfest, Haunted Brewery Tours, all right around the corner. Check out at Fort Peaks Brew or at Fort Peaks Pub to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. You must be 21 or older to drink Fort Peaks, and please drink responsibly. All right, before we get out of here, the last segment that we have for every game, we got this little thing called Fan Flicks. And yeah. normally it revolves around people that are at the game at Tempe, uh, at Mountain America Stadium, and they're, they're shooting us photos of the yep. environment. But this one's a little different. This one's a little different. Shout out Donald. Shout Obviously out Donald. one of our, our hardcore fans. Uh, sent me this picture a couple weeks ago. Obviously, last week we didn't uh, we didn't do many graphics because last week was pretty tough. Yeah. But uh, shout out not on these are kids. He, uh, just I love seeing ASU fans across the country. Yeah. Donald's out on the East Coast, making sure that they're in the Sun Devils gear. I know. I think he said that you know they might be Cowboys fans or something like that. But we don't focus on that. The fact that they're in Sun Devils gear. Shout out. Uh, hey, look. Appreciate you, Donald. Appreciate the fam. Yeah, absolutely. We we appreciate Donald. We appreciate the family. And we appreciate everybody staying up with us to talk about this game. Look. And honestly, we just appreciate the fam. We've had a couple of run-ins tonight. We do. With people who watch we our show. We'll talk about it on, on Monday. But we just, I like, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, like, really appreciate y'all's support. It, it, it is... Donald, it, you're, you're about to make me fucking cry, like, Donald. It, it, we oh, really, I can't do this We right really now, do appreciate y'all's support. I can't do it right now. I can't do it right now. Look, we, we love y'all. We, re- we really, really do. Uh, and look, ASU and Kenny Dillingham, they're going to get it right. Uh, and this is a loss is a loss, but this is a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So a- ASU fans can go to sleep tonight knowing uh, that their football program is in good hands with Kenny Dillingham. Guys, before we get out of here, give us a follow at PHNX underscore Sun Devils. You can follow me at Anthony underscore Tochi. You can follow this guy right here at Sean underscore to pause. Just uh, back in the scat. Screw back the pass. Back to scat. As always. Absolutely. We will see you guys on Monday at 2 p.m. But enjoy your football Sunday. And in the meantime, peace.